Hello friends, welcome to Fundu Tester. In this session, we are going to learn race test I will give you guarantee after watching this video, you will be able to write your script without watching any tutorial. So let's start. So in race test we have simple syntax. So this syntax is based on the BDD. So whatever we have learned in Cucumber, when, then, given. So this kind of syntax we have in REST assured as well. So this is the basic syntax of REST assured. So here it is starting with REST assured dot given. Then when we are we are passing here headers, params, body here. Then whatever API we are hitting. Let's say we are hitting get request. Then we have to write get otherwise post. And then so we are cracking this old part so here our first part is rest seo dot given so this is our first part so what we are doing here in rest seo dot given so let's say before starting this we need to understand api structure so how we are dealing with the api so let's say this is my get api so how get api looks so what are what we are passing with get api so in, in API, let's say we are testing in different different environments. So uh, we are testing in staging, prod, uh, or other environment we are testing. So how our API or endpoint looks. So we have like this HTTP, HTTPS, colon, double slash, base URL, dot com, and then we are writing endpoint here. So whatever endpoint here after slash we are writing endpoint. So let's say we are hitting student API. So it is student. So if we cracking this, we can divide it into two parts. So this will be my first part. So up to this, this will be my base URL. And this will be my endpoint. So if we are testing on different environments or let's say we are testing on staging or prod whatever so our base url will be changed but endpoint will remain same so how we can define here so let's say we are hitting get api or post api whatever api we are hitting so we can write so before this syntax we have to write rest assured dot base uri And we need to give this URL. So like this we are defining the URL. So this will be our first step to start our test. So wherever let's say this is my test method. This is my test method. So we need to extend our test method with this base test. So let we have to define as a base test. And this will be my test method. So whenever we are running this test we are starting with base URL. So how this is how we are setting the base url now the point is when we need to set this student or endpoint so that we will discuss in further further point now the thing is what is the second part here so this will be my second part up to this this is my second part then we are writing this url this is my third part and then so this will be my fourth part so if we are dividing in four part it will it looks simple very simple Now question comes here, what is when headers, param or body? So you, we understand first point, right? We need to set the base URL here. So in first part, we are setting the base URL. Now second part. So second part, we are passing header, param and body. So before this, we need to understand get and post request. So for example, I am taking example of post request. So in post request, how, what we are doing, how we are triggering the post api so let's say this will be my base url and this is my endpoint so along with this for post api we are passing two parameter mostly so one will be my headers and another will be my body so in headers and body in both the web in both the in headers and in body we are passing key and values pair so let's say we are creating a student so in body we need to pass a student data so, so let's say we need to pass id id is one 
then we are passing name so let, uh, let's say name is John then we need to pass course so let's say course is testing so this will be my body for the post API and now I have to pass a headers as well so in headers what we are passing we are passing auth token we have other token or uh, application type these things we are passing in headers so how we are writing generally in usually in postman how we are writing headers so in headers part we are writing we have to define here uh, let's say this is my token so the uh, let's say x student auth And here we need to define a auth after that content type. So we are passing content type here, and then we let's say we have XYZ parameters. So we have we are passing multiple parameters like this. So usually post API contains two things. We need to remember one is headers and one is body. So one and two. Now for get API, get API also can contain two part so let's say this i am taking example of get api so what it contains let's say i am searching something on youtube so what i am doing i am searching uh, testing tutorial so in search part i am writing a uh, testing tutorial and it will go along with the parameters so how it works real time let's say this will be my base url youtube.com and i am searching something so this will be my search after that we are passing params and we we are passing body as well uh, sorry we are passing headers so in param what we are passing let's say we are searching some text so we are writing in param let's say we are writing uh, we are searching testing tutorial so this will be my first parameter and if you go if you go into network tab and you can see it, there will be page number and uh, content size like that it will be there so let's say i am giving a page number so it is going to give me result on first page now in headers also we are passing the same thing uh, let's say i am passing auth uh, along with content type so this data we are sending in headers so now we understand what is a get api and post api now we need to find a similarity and we need to find a difference so here similar part is headers so in both the api we are passing headers but in get api we are passing params and in post api we are passing the body now question comes if we are writing headers params body here then what happens we don't have body for get api and we don't have params for post api so what we can do simply let's say we are hitting get api so we need to use only headers so for get api we need to use only headers and only param let's say we are using post api so we need to use header and body now question comes here in parenthesis what it consumes let's say for example you are you are hitting get api and you are passing single parameter so how you can write here you can write param search let's say you are searching testing tutorial so search and testing tutorials testing tutorial so these things you have to write in param part similar way let's say you have single header you have to write in a header or let's say you have in body you have only single key and value pair so you can simply write this say a single key and value pair but the question comes here what if i have multiple key and value pairs or i have i am passing entire json data in my body so how it works so for that there are three approach first approach is you can create a map object second approach is you can create a json object and third approach is we can use data provider so how it works but here there is one more confusion here this is header so we can pass single value as well and we can pass multiple value no what we have to do instead let's say we are passing multiple values 
सो वी नीड टू राइट हेडर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ हेडर सो वॉट वी हैव टू राइट हेडर्स हेडर्स एंड वी नीड टू पास हियर एंटायर मैप ऑब्जेक्ट जैसन ऑब्जेक्ट और डेटा प्रोवाइडर वॉट एवर वी आर कंफर्टेबल विथ सिमिलर वे फॉर पेराम्स वी पेराम वी हैव टू राइट पेराम्स एंड वी नीड टू पास जैसन ऑब्जेक्ट सिमिलर वे फॉर बॉडी सो हियर ऑल्सो वी कैन डिरेक्टली पास और जैसन ऑब्जेक्ट और मैप ऑब्जेक्ट हियर so the question comes how we can create the json object or map object so if you don't know how is map works or how to create a map object so you can learn this in my previous video i have provided in description section so what you have to do you have to simply create a map object and you have to put key and value pair so let's say i am putting key and value pair inside so this will be my key and value so whatever params we are passing here so see these things we have to do create a single map and we have to put in return method in return method this met method will return a has map so this entire has map we can use here so this will be used as our headers or params or body so here we have created the second part as well now we need to understand third part so here we have written get so let's say we are hitting get request then we have to write a get along with headers and param what if we are write hitting post request so simply we need to write here instead of get we need to write post here and we need to use this for post header and body and we need to simply write post dot instead of get we need to write a post very simple now in parenthesis what we need to pass so in parenthesis whatever we have created a base url so in url also we have two part one is base url and one is end point so this will be my base url and then after slash this will be my end point so whatever base url we have used that we have passed here but remaining part end point we need to pass in this parenthesis whatever request we are hitting let's say we are hitting get request or we are hitting post request we need to pass this endpoint in parenthesis so this is very easy part now we are moving forward to fourth part so in fourth part what we are doing so here we have given data we have given values here we have defined what we are doing now we did everything now what we have to do we have to assert the data so what we are doing we are asserting yes status code we are asserting we are asserting headers we are we can assert response body so whatever value we need to assert we can write here so simply for that they have, for this part there will be multiple syntax so let's say you need to assert status code so simply you need to write then assert that here a small t caps in this parenthesis no need to pass any data and this state status code consume int value so here in status code you have to pass whatever response you are getting let's say you are hitting get api so you are getting 200 as a status code so you need to pass status code 200 here so understand so this will be your rest assured using this four part you can hit whatever api you wanted to hit so now we have to discuss one more very important and interview question so let me erase this what is missing here so missing part is we have written this line of code one line of code or multiple line of code what it will return so this is a very important interview question so this part will return response so how it works so it is written response and you can store in any reference variable so how to deal with it so this will be response type to use this we need to convert it into string or we need to convert into json object so how we can do that let's say you wanted to convert it into string and you wanted to print in console or any uh, report in let's say you are uh, using extend report or whatever report you are using you need to use this response so how it works so you, you need to write in print statement 
response with this response and we need to write a string to convert into json object we have to write json object obj is equal to new json object and in parenthesis we need to pass response a string so this consumes string value so response dot a string now very important part comes here for most api what we are validating so we are getting so 100 or lines or 500 lines of response body so how we are validating this this is the mandatory part so we need to learn that how we are going to validate because this is the four line we are playing mostly we are playing with the json body and we are validating the data so let's say in api i am getting four value so the, uh, let's say i am getting id uh, student name then cl class course so this data i am getting here so to validate that we need to understand the json format so it is in json array or list or whatever value we need to understand this thing we need to learn this thing first after that let's say we are getting simply plain json object so we can simply verify that json dot has let's say you need to verify this id so simply you can pass here and it will give a, it will return boolean status so you can verify so this is one more part now the question comes here we need, this part is required or not this last part after then it is required or not so this part is not at all required for one api let's say you are validating status code what things we are validating so first we need to understand what data we are validating so for general purpose we are validating status code then response time then few data from response body so these things we are going to validate with api response now this string will verify only one one value or two value but this is the right way to use it depends but let's say we are not using this simply up to this we can write our request and whatever response we are getting so from that response we can get this data and we can create a utility for this so this utility will give us the result in a better format i hope you learned basic about rest assured if you have any question please write in comment section thank you guys thanks for the watching